Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well. Today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is provoke. Provoke. Now I know we've been kind of drawing out this chapter over these four days, uh, but I wanted to kind of see this whole picture as we're closing out 1 Kings today. And, um, and we may talk about it a little bit on um, Monday, um, just as kind of a recap there with Jehoshaphat and prayer. But for today, as we finish up right here in this story, particularly, I want us to see this word provoke because as we've seen everything go on, there's a lot of times we need to understand. I want you to put yourself in the place of uh, Micaiah, the, the prophet of the Lord. And I'm not saying that you're a prophet, but I, I, what, I want to, what I want you to imagine is that you have received the true word of God and all those others around you are speaking lies. A lot of times this is where we feel as Christians. We feel as though we're all alone. We have that same mentality as Elijah did that, hey, I, I alone am left a prophet of God and these 450 prophets of Baal. But you remember God reminds them, hey, there's, um, you know, about 7,000 over here who haven't bowed to Baal either. So you're not alone. And even if everyone else had, God had never relinquished control. God was still with him. He hadn't left him nor forsaken him and he won't do that for you or I either. But with this provoking today, I want us to be aware that the enemy sometimes hits us right in the face. Maybe not physically as it is in our story today, but uh, many times spiritually uh, just coming right at us and we have to be prepared about how we're going to handle when that moment comes. And Micaiah was ready and I believe that we'll see today um, how he handled that situation. So today, 1 Kings chapter 22. Look, I got off my page. 1 Kings chapter 22, looking at verses 24 and 25. Now, Zedekiah, the son of Chenaana, uh, went near and struck Micaiah on the cheek and said, Which way did the Spirit from the Lord go from me to speak to you? And Micaiah said, Indeed, you shall see on that day when you go into an inner chamber to hide. Now, can't imagine that in, through the course of all this conversation that now this kind of leader of these 400 prophets comes up and physically attacks him and says, you know, OK, well, fine. You just tell me which way the spirit of the Lord left me to come to you. Now, if you think about it, especially at that time when this, the spirit was moving from place to place and with people at times, not like it is today with the uh, once Pentecost and the Holy Spirit came uh, as he did then and is still here today uh, and is able to indwell us all. But at this time, it was a different time, the way that things were going. But even that, him saying, look, I was used by the Lord. So wait a minute, which way did the spirit leave? Where did he go? It's a sarcastic attack, and he's provoking Micaiah. He's trying to get him to get upset and, and maybe even admit that he's wrong. The problem is, is that he was the only one telling the truth. Now, you look in our world today, if we had 400 saying one thing and one person saying another, who would we typically be believe? We would go with the majority quite often. But now imagine you're that one. How would you handle that? When it seems like everybody else around is, is telling a lie and believing a lie and wanting to believe the lie, but then they go even further than that and they attack you, either physically, personally, spiritually, emotionally. What will you do? Well, I love Micaiah's response where he says, we'll see in that day when you go run and hide in your inner chamber. It's almost as if the, the word of the Lord gave him just a little bit extra and says, oh, look, don't worry. He's going to be hiding from everybody. But I, I, I just can't help but wonder. And I have to believe that Micaiah in that statement, he was still rock solid because he knew he had a word from the Lord. It didn't matter what everybody else said. He trusted in the Lord. We're getting ready to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this week. Can you imagine how many people?
people ridiculed the prophets for talking about the coming Messiah? Can you imagine how even the shepherds and those who who, uh, uh, were witnesses to the newborn king, how many of those were rejected? How many of them people didn't believe? How many people didn't believe the disciples? How many people didn't believe Jesus himself, that he was who he said he was? And how many people don't believe us today when we talk about the great things that God has done? But know that they're going to provoke you. But don't respond in, in, in some rash manner. You respond in the way that God calls you to. And you know the best way to respond is to respond in prayer. No wonder Jesus said, pray for your enemies and those who persecute you and want to drag you through the mud because of him. He says, that's who we need to pray for. I don't know about you, but that changes our attitude of our prayer lives real quick. So today, don't be provoked. Instead, maybe be provoked to prayer. God bless you, and I pray you have a great, great day.